I'm very excited today to introduce to you Hope Ray. She is a psychotherapist and founder of Betrayal Violence Institute. It's an organization focused on examining the abusive nature of secrecy and deception. Hope's work reshapes cultural and clinical perceptions about infidelity, stay shaming, and complex partner trauma. We'll learn more about all of that in a minute. And she aims to foster greater cohesion and clarity among mental health clinicians. Congratulations for having your article published by Authority Magazine. And I hope everyone that sees this video goes to Authority Magazine and reads the entire article. It's quite interesting. So tell me, how is it you want to shape the reshape the cultural and clinical perceptions around infidelity? The great question, and thank you for peeking deep into this area of my field. This is where I've been uh, really interested for the past 10 years to generate more standardization. And I think that's kind of a, a missing link right now when it comes to the mental health realm. There's plenty of people uh, who are therapists, psychologists psychologists, even pastors and, and coaches who are mm -hmm. helping couples navigate infidelity issues, mm -hmm. but we're all coming from different lenses and sometimes a blend or a combination of different lenses. There isn't a very standardized set of language or even approach to how do we measure success, healing? What is that measuring stick? And so I believe that the gap gets filled when we take a look at power and control dynamics. And so that's been where my work has focused over the past 10 years, trying to bring awareness to that so we can have a measuring stick to help couples navigate or individuals navigate after infidelity. So in my language, it would mean kind of standardizing an approach that would be, bring in maybe the most effective pieces to helping couples heal it was am i rephrasing that accurately yeah. yeah i think it's not only the most effective it's been long overlooked that when somebody for years withholds essential information from their partner that relates to their own safety their own well-being it greatly reduces that unknowing partner's ability to make choices in full agency to know what it is that they're signing on to or partaking in relationally with their partner. Mm -hmm. And so in those kind of scenarios, we have an equity gap. We have a power differential. And I believe this is not being looked at in terms of infidelity. It's seen as a domestic violence only type of situation. But I want to see us begin to expand what we know from domestic violence rhetoric and take a look at how this culminates when secrets are accompanying infidelity. It's this is fascinating to me because I've I coach couples, I have been for almost 30 years, and I've had two instances, clear instances where there was infidelity and there was the desire to heal and recover. And I did the best I knew how to do. And in those two instances, they appear to have healed what was uh, missing in their relationship in the past, uh, being totally clear and honest with each other for the present and the future. But I'm, I'm sure I missed pieces that could have been even more effective. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the work you're doing. Tell me, what is complex partner trauma? That's the way I choose to identify the likely impact or set of in impacts that occur for a partner who's been betrayed by three things. Number one, their partner's been maintaining a relationship with them while secretly and repeatedly violating fidelity. Mm -hmm. And then number three, using deception, gaslighting, even exploitative behavior while keeping those secrets. Mm -hmm. And so when somebody has been treated in that manner by their closest and dearest, I believe that it sets them up for deep and significant attachment injury, psychological injury, injury 
detriment in every facet and form of their life, especially mm-hmm. their physical body. If they've been exposed to STIs unknowingly, their finances, oftentimes there is nefarious financial things going on alongside those secrets. Mm-hmm. And so complex partner trauma is a way to describe how complex and traumatic this unfolding cumulative event is for someone who over the course of years begins discovering that that's how their relationship is going. And they didn't know until they generate discovery after discovery and eventually get a bigger picture of what is going on. And I believe in your article, you mentioned, even though the infidelity may stop, how hard it is for the betrayed partner to regain trust. Like what else don't I don't, what else don't I know? Yeah, I think that, first of all, trust is possible to rebuild. I don't think, Mm -hmm. Nancy, that I could do this work if it wasn't, because it would be too sad and too hopeless. hopeless. It takes some very significant and and intricate types of interventions. Mm -hmm. Um, It takes an extreme amount of willingness on part of the person who's caused the betrayal. Mm -hmm. So when they get into that willing zone, I find often that their partners become even more hesitant to trust them yes. because it, you know, this is just the old version of you being duplicitous and and pulling the rug out from under me or duping me in a in an even more higher level evil way, right? Mm-hmm. right. And so, you know, it's deeply alarming when when a person's been betrayed and their partner has no remorse, but it's equally troubling when they do and they want to try and rebuild trust and become safe. The whole thing is such a messy scenario that you can't understand unless you've been there yourself. So describe for us the power imbalance that is often a part of the healing process. So in order to dissolve the power and control that someone has built up for themselves by keeping really essential information hidden from their partner, they have to, first of all, expose the the pieces of their partner's reality that have been concealed, oftentimes for years. And that should be done very carefully in a setting with a really well-trained person who can usher them through uh, something like that, which, you know, is liable to make the relationship collapse if not done mm-hmm. correctly. But partners deserve to know the truth. Uh, yes. They need to know and they can handle the truth. In fact, I think it's worse for most people to not know what it is they need to know mm-hmm. than to actually know it. I think any healthy relationship, the foundation of any healthy relationship is truthfulness. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. honesty. Without that, the foundation is fragile. So you mentioned that even solo sex damages the relationship. How does that, how does that work? Yeah, there, I believe everybody defines for themselves what feels like infidelity. I don't think there should be any standardized definition of what types of sexual behaviors cross the line into infidelity. And when each coupleship or each relationship defines that for themselves, oftentimes many folks feel that any kind of sexual behavior that doesn't involve the other partner would cross over the threshold of infidelity. Mm-hmm. And so for couples who define solo sex or, you know, that would be masturbation or, or pornography outside of their right. partner's awareness, um, you know, if, if that feels like betrayal to them, then that's how they define it. And there should be no issues with whoever is supporting them therapeutically mm-hmm. in allowing them to stand by their moral inclinations there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so tell the characteristics of your favorite clients who have gone through this process and actually healed the relationship. Uh-huh. You know, <clears throat> oftentimes I'm working with cisgender heterosexual couples where there's been a man who's violated fidelity secretly and repeatedly for years. Mm -hmm. And then he's married to a woman or long-term partnered with a woman. Uh, Oftentimes they have children together. They have businesses together, ministries together. They've established quite a legacy, right? Mm -hmm. And whether they've been married a long time, many decades, high school sweethearts, or a shorter period of time, the betrayal 
always feels like an inside job. And so for the people who have caused that kind of betrayal to rise to the occasion and say, I need to become safe and I need to become trustworthy. And they're saying that internally driven, meaning that's who I am meant to be, who I want to be. And yeah, I'm doing this for my partner because she deserves it. But I'm doing this also because I can't live in any other way any longer. So that kind of internal drive, that willingness to do whatever it takes, in my opinion, far outweighs someone's readiness. It's all about willingness. Mm -hmm. And that willingness can ebb and flow. But it's my favorite characteristic to detect. And when it's there, it's palpable. There's a certain humility, I think, that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then for partners, no matter their gender, what I love to see is that they eventually cross a threshold of, I know I'm going to be okay. I don't know if my relationship will make it. I don't know if I'll be able to stay with my partner, but I've learned that this thing, although it tanked me, is not going to take me out permanently. And I am going to be able to rebuild my sense of self and my life. And so those, those pieces of resiliency, when I see those, I know we have a lot of good ingredients to work with. I love that because it, you know, those characteristics are also what I find to be the most hopeful characteristics of couples that come to me saying, we're in trouble, we need help, we want to up-level our relationship, but the willingness to do the work Mm -hmm. is the most important essential ingredient to actually seeing that progress. So what are the biggest blocks to personal and couple healing? Probably the opposite of what you just said. Yeah, I think if we're going to look at characteristics, uh, character traits, then you're right. The opposite of of willingness, the resistance, the stubbornness, the lack of personal responsibility or awareness and capability Mm -hmm. of generating insight, those would be roadblocks for somebody to get well, to become a healthy, beautiful, safe partner. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there's other roadblocks too, societal ones. There are all sorts of unique barriers that partners face, uh, that individuals who are working to figure out why they're cheating in the first place. And I think to some degree, it has to do with it being a bit of the wild west out there when it comes to the therapeutic community, offering so many really wonderful resources, but a lot of of resources that clients then have to sift through to figure out which fits their paradigm and which really addresses the heart of the issues they're facing. This is so interesting to me. I'd love to quiz you a whole lot more about all of this. Um, Do you feel comfortable sharing how you got so intrigued and passionate about this particular work? Yeah, sure. You know, this is... um, how my brain has always worked. I recall when I was in college, we were learning about theories, Piaget and Freud and all this Mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, instead of listening to the details of the theory, I remember being fascinated by the structures and thinking, this is what I want to do. I wish I lived back then so I could be a theorist. Well, I realized (laughs) that I can be a theoretician. Uh, There's a certain level of academic knowledge and existential capability mm-hmm. that you need, but that's how my brain works. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'd love to say that I'm just deeply compelled and driven, um, except for that I can't help myself. Mm-hmm. I want to see people have good good information mm-hmm. the first time they go looking mm-hmm. for it. And I want to help organize and cohesivize and cohere some of the information that's out there. I have mm-hmm. so many incredible colleagues writing books, developing programs, The problem is we need to be able to kind of assemble with some unified language that helps our clients know what it is they're dealing with faster. Faster. I love that. And, and so that it makes more sense, you know, gosh, I love, love your passion, love the way your brain is working. You're definitely a theorist and you're out there leading the field as far as not only helping clients, but helping other therapists become more effective. For those of you who are watching this video and want to reach Hope Ray, you can do that 
by following her work on TikTok and other social media. Her handle is at Hope Ray Therapy or go to hoperay.com to get in touch with Hope Ray and perhaps you're a therapist who wants to find out more about learning from her or you may be a potential client that needs the kind of help that she's so effective in giving. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. I hope we get to meet in person at some point in time. Me too, Nancy. Thank you for making space for this important conversation. Oh, I'm delighted. Do you know that you're only the, uh, when I sent the quiz out to attract people talking about recovery from infidelity, I've only had two responses, which it surprised me, but it also says how delicate a topic it is and how difficult it is for some people to address it. Absolutely. You're right about that. 